All right, so let's talk about macroevolution and speciation. So we've talked about microevolution before, which of course is change within a species, and the mechanisms being genetic drift, selective reproduction, mutations, gene flow, and natural selection. So through those processes, we get a change in allele frequency, and so there's changes within a species. Now, macroevolution is then just an accumulation of those microevolutionary changes such that we achieve speciation. So new species form, new species that are reproductively isolated. Of course, thinking about the biological species definition, organisms of the same species are able to reproduce and produce fertile offspring. So when they're no longer able to do that, they're reproductively isolated and they're different species. So accumulation of microevolutionary change can produce new species. And we talk about three different modes of speciation, allopatric, parapatric, and sympatric, and we'll talk about those. So we've got some syllabus objectives that are talking about the modes of speciation, different patterns of evolution. So we've got three different patterns so we've got three different patterns of evolution or diversification, divergent, convergent, and parallel. Let's have a quick look at these. So divergent evolution is when you've got a common ancestor, and but the ancestral species are isolated from each other and they're in environments with different conditions. So they, um, they become different enough that they can no longer reproduce, produce fertile offspring. They're reproductively isolated. And, and so when we've got these divergent, this divergent evolution, we often see uh, homologous structures. So di same structure, different function. Whereas convergent evolution is where they don't um, share a recent common ancestor, um, but they independently develop characteristics that have a similar function because they have similar selective pressures. And a classic example of that, is, of that that we talk about is our analogous structures like the, the bird wing and the insect wing. They both allow flight, but they come about it entirely different ways. Different structures, same function. Parallel evolution is where there is a common ancestor, but there's independent evolution of common traits. Um, so populations are geographically isolated, but they've got similar selection pressures. So they uh, evolve adaptations that are quite similar. So like, for example, um, we've got a, like a glider that is, um, so we have a, a marsupial glider and we have a placental glider. So yes, there is a common ancestor, um, but they then evolve these characteristics independently because they're isolated um, but, but they share uh, they they're isolated but they have similar selection pressures so therefore they tend to develop the same sorts of adaptations and, and the final one is coevolution where we've got two or more species that uh, their evolution of each species affects the other a classic example of this is that we've got insects that feed on plants so that the plants then evolve mechanisms to um, deter feeding, for example, spines, bristles, chemical defences and things. So coming back to this concept of speciation occurs through the accumulation of microevolutionary change to the point where uh, populations are reproductively isolated. So let's look at these different mechanisms. Um, because the syllabus objective says that we need to understand there's different mechanisms of isolation. There's geographic, reproductive, spatial, and temporal. Essentially, all of these influence gene flow. So let's have a look at what they are. So geographical isolation, there might be a river or a, a canyon or a mountain range. So the, there's no gene flow between the populations. So there's a geographical barrier but equally there might be spatial isolation. So they occupy different niches and they don't meet. Temporal isolation is when they reproduce uh, at different seasons. There could also be behavioral isolation. So their, their mating rituals and things are, are mean that they, they no longer attracted to each other. It may well be that they, um, their sexual organs are no longer fit and no longer compatible, or it might be at the gamete level. So both of these could be reproductive.
in isolation in that um, the gametes aren't compatible so you can't produce fertile offspring. Right, now we've got modes of speciation. Let's have a look at each of these. So allopatric speciation, we've got a physical barrier um, and so there's no gene flow between them um, and if they've got different selection pressures then they're going to evolve um, you know differently uh, and they're, they're going to have uh, different gene pools <clears throat> so we've got a physical barrier pre preventing gene flow and with different selection pressures we're going to get the development of different gene pools and um, so even if the, the barrier is removed in the future no interbreeding will occur and they are selective uh, they are reproductively isolated so parapatric speciations when you have two populations that are next to each other that they've got different environmental fact, uh, conditions and there is gene flow between them, but there's non-random mating in that individuals are gonna mate with the individuals that are, are closest to it. Because they've got different environmental factors, we're gonna see different adaptations develop uh, and different gene pools. And lastly, we've got sympatric. Now this occurs within a um, <clears throat> Within a geographical area that's got the same uh, the, the same environmental factors, so this is going to occur when polyploidy occurs, or, or when when you know when you have some sort of aneuploidy, and so that um, organisms are, are only going to be able to uh, successfully mate with um, other individuals that have the same ploidy. This is quite rare. Uh, mostly only happens in plants. So we've got these three. Allopatrics is the most common, uh, thinking about the double L as being a physical barrier. Parapatric means next to, and sympatric means within, and this only occurs when this um, uh, aneuploidy occurs. All right, the last thing is about explaining how populations with, with reduced genetic diversity face an increased risk of extinction. And we talk about population bottlenecks. So we're really here, we're talking about genetic drift. So an event happens where it wipes out a large amount of the population and a large part of the gene pool. So the population that's left has a very small gene pool. So that means, that means they've got much less variation and therefore less ability to be able to cope with change in its environment. So therefore, it's at risk of extinction. It greatly reduces the gene pool. So therefore, there's, um, there's a lack of genetic diversity. So it's very, uh, so therefore, it makes it very difficult to be able to cope with any environmental changes or disease. And so therefore, there's increased risk of extinction.